In this video, we're going to talk about how we can separate insoluble solids from liquids. Now, an insoluble solid would be a solid that can't dissolve. So this can't dissolve. For example, we talked about sand can't dissolve. It will go to the bottom of a container because it's suspended. Also, rocks can't dissolve. So an insoluble solid would be something that can't dissolve. So how can we separate a solid that can't dissolve from liquids? That's the question. And there's four ways you should know. We'll go through those four ways now. So for example, if we have mud and water, so mud water, remember mud is just sand, so sand can't dissolve. One way that we can dissolve it, or separate, not dissolve it, one way that we can separate them too, so we wanna, if we want to have water by itself, mud by itself, is something called filtration. And this is diagram shows you filtration. So we've got filter paper, which is right here. Filter paper has very fine pores. So filter paper looks a bit like this. You basically have these fine pores. They're quite small, but they're big enough to catch, for example, sand. So these red dots are meant to be the sand. So they can't fit through those fine pores. But the water is so small that the water can fit through. Right, so what happens if we put the actual water, mud water, right, so here is mud water, if we put that into the filter paper, what's going to happen is that the sand gets stuck, so that's right here, the sand is stuck, but the water can pass through those fine pores and be separated into the beaker. So in this case, we've got at the end water here and sand on top. We've separated sand on, from water, and that first process is called filtration, right, that's one you really need to know. Another way that we can separate an insoluble solid, something that does not dissolve in water, from water, would be um, by using a sieve. Right. So, for example, if we have rocks and we want to have we have lots of rocks in water, what we could do is we could use that sieve. Now, a sieve is simpler, simple or similar to a um, filter paper, but the actual pores are a bit bigger. Right. So you can see here these pores are quite big. They're quite much, quite a bit bigger than the ones in filter paper. But if you put, for example, rock and water in here, so you put rock, rock and water, what's going to happen is that those rocks are going to get stuck. So these rocks here are too big, which means these rocks are going to get stuck. They're not going to fit through these pores. But the water can escape. So the water can fit through. And at the end, we're going to have water on one side. And stuck within the, those sieve, the sieve is going to be all of those rocks. Right? So we can use sieve a sieve to separate, for example, rocks from water. Now, the third way that we can separate um, insoluble solids from liquids is, for example, a process called decanting. Now, remember, I said with anything that is insoluble, so it does not dissolve in water, what's, what's going to happen eventually is it's going to be um, going to the bottom of the container. So sand, for example, will drop to the bottom of the container. So once it's dropped to the bottom of the container, what we can do is we can carefully pour the water into another beaker, very carefully pour the water into another beaker. And what's going to be left if we have at the end is we're going to have one beaker, the first beaker with just the, the mud or the sand, right? the mud, I'll call it mud. So once we've removed all the water from that first beaker, but using decanting, that's when we slowly pour bit and bit into another beaker, and um, like this, we're going to be left with one beaker full of mud, and the other beaker, this beaker here, will be then full of water. So again, we've separated mud from water, and um, we use, that process was called decanting. And the fourth process that we can separate insoluble solids from liquids is called the centrifuge. Right, so right here, this is the centrifuge. And this is this is pretty cool how that works. It's almost like a, a carousel or a merry-go-round, a really quick one. So you can imagine, for example, blood. Blood is a mixture between different types of substances. The blood looks like it's one clear um, solution, but it's not. So what we can do is we can put it into this um, centrifuge, this machine here. And what it will do is it will spin it really quickly. So it will go around in circles, spin it really quickly. And it's super fast. So if you look at it, it's almost, you know, you can't see it happening, but it's spinning super fast. And what we have in the end is we're going to have this blood being separated into its components. So for example, in the end, we're going to have plasma. We're going to have white, so this is the plasma part. This is the red blood cell part. And then we're also going to have some white blood cells as well. And then early on, it was all one mixture, but then it was separated. In this case, it's using something called density. So almost the heavier parts are going to go somewhere else than the lighter parts. And this is how a centrifuge works. 
So what I want you to get out of this video is realize that we can separate insoluble solids from liquids. So insoluble solids are solids that can't dissolve uh, in, for example, water. And we can do that, we can separate them through four different processes. We can use filtration, for example, um, you know, if we want to have mud water, we can use filter paper to separate the mud from water. We can use a sieve or sieving. It's when we have a bigger pores, but we can use those to uh, separate larger substances, for example, rocks from water, because the rocks get stuck and the water goes through. We can use decanting, where we slowly wait for the actual sand to drop to the bottom of the container, and then we pour out the rest of the, the water into a different container. And we can use centrifuge, where we just spin it so fast that all the heavier parts uh, drop to the bottom and all the lighter parts are at the top. So we have then separated a mixture into its individual parts.